The derivative of a linear function is very simple. It's just the slope of the line. However, most functions are nonlinear, which means their slope changes for different values of the input. The next simplest function after a linear is a quadratic, so let's explore the derivative of a quadratic function. Let's call the function g, and let's use t rather than x for the independent variable for a change. So we'll make g be 3 times t squared. And let's try to calculate the average rate of change of g, which is the slope of the secant, and the instantaneous rate of change, the slope of the tangent, or the derivative. If we think of g as being some position, for example, the distance an object falling has dropped, and we can think of t as time, then we can think of the slope of the secant, or the average rate of change, as being average velocity. And then the instantaneous rate of change will just be the velocity at a particular point in time. The secant slope is equal to the change in the output g, or the change in position, divided by the change in the input t, or change in time. Let's calculate the slope from t equals t naught. We'll start at t naught to a later time t equals t naught plus delta t. So then delta g, the change in g, is g of the later time t naught plus delta t minus g of t naught all over the change in the input, the change in time, delta t. Let's start at the point t naught equals 1. Then the secant slope is g of 1 plus delta t minus g of 1 over delta t. Now let's plug in what g is. g is 3 times t squared. So g of 1 plus delta t is 3 times 1 plus delta t squared. g of 1 is 3 times 1 squared. And we divide by delta t. Multiplying out the quadratic, we get 3 times 1 plus 2 delta t plus delta t squared minus 3, still over delta t. This 3 cancels with a 1, and we get that the slope of the secant is 6 times delta t plus 3 delta t squared all over delta t. And if we cancel out the delta t, we get 6 plus 3 delta t. And of course, this makes sense only if delta t is not equal to 0. So the slope of the secant from 1 to 1 plus delta t is 6 plus 3 delta t. Now to calculate the derivative, or the instantaneous rate of change, we need to calculate the tangent slope. And the tangent slope is just the secant slope, delta g over delta t, in the limit that delta t goes to 0. Since we're looking at t equals 1, this will be the limit as delta t goes to 0 of g of 1 plus delta t minus g of 1 over delta t. Now remember the secant slope is valid as long as delta t is not equal to 0. And the limit as delta t goes to 0 means that we don't ever let delta t get exactly to 0. So it's okay to use the fact that delta t is not equal to 0. This means we can replace the slope of the secant with 6 plus 3 times delta t. So we can take the limit as delta t goes to 0 of 6 plus 3 times delta t. That's the tangent slope. Well, what happens to 6 plus 3 times delta t as delta t gets smaller and smaller? This just gets closer to 6 because you get 6 plus something that gets really, really small. So the limit is simply 6. Since we never actually got to delta t equals 0, we don't care about the fact that we had to divide by 0. We never did divide by 0. We just got really, really close. We were just dividing by a really, really small number. So therefore, we can conclude that the derivative of g at 1 is equal to 6. The slope of g at 1 is 6. Can we calculate this in general at any value of t?
Well, let's start with the secant slope, delta g over delta t. Well, this in general is g of t plus delta t minus g of t over delta t. Let's just plug in what g is and see if we can simplify. So g of t plus delta t is 3 times t plus delta t squared. g of t is 3t squared divided by delta t. Multiply out the numerator. And here we can see that the 3t squared cancels so that it simplifies to 6t delta t plus 3 delta t squared. And since we don't have to worry about the case when delta t is equal to 0, we can cancel the delta t's to get that the slope of the secant is just 6t plus 3 delta t. as long as delta t is not equal to zero. Now to calculate the derivative, we need the tangent slope. So we need to take the limit as delta t goes to zero. So we take the limit as delta t goes to zero of g of t plus delta t minus g of t over delta t. Again, we don't care about the case when delta t is zero, so delta t is not zero, we can plug in our formula for the secant slope. So the tangent slope is the limit as delta t goes to zero of 6t plus 3 times delta t. Well, what does this get closer and closer to as delta t gets really small? Second term goes away, approaches zero. 6t doesn't change when delta t is zero. There's no delta t here, just a t. So as delta t goes to zero, this quantity just approaches 6t. So therefore, in general, the derivative of g at point t is 6 times t. So starting with 3t squared, we get 6t when we take the derivative. So what is dg dt? That's just another way to write the derivative. It's 6t. How about dg dt when t is equal to 4? Well, plug in t equals 4, you get 6 times 4, which is 24. We can visualize the derivative of our function 3t squared by using the derivative of a function applet. This derivative, however, uses x, so we have to call g not 3 times t squared, but 3 times x squared. And the applet also calls the function f rather than g. But here's our function, 3x squared or 3t squared. Note that the applet are, does all the work for us and tells us that indeed g prime, or f prime, here it is, is 6x. And we can see that our derivative is this green curve. It's actually a line. Because the slope increases linearly with x. When x is 0, the tangent line is flat and the slope is 0. For positive values of x, we have a positive slope, which increases the larger x is. For negative values of x, we have a negative slope, which decreases the more negative you make x.